Hi everyone, it's Joanne. I'm here on another Fast Friday to tell you about a fantastic, a fun fact about a fantastic Young Living project. Only today, being that it's Thanksgiving week, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of sharing a project with you, one of the products with you, I am going to share with you about the projects that the Young Living Foundation does. When I started with Young Living about two and a half years ago, I chose this company because after I did my eight or so months of research, I determined that they were the company that had the most pure product out there. They are 100% therapeutic, 100% pure therapeutic grade oils, and all of the other companies that I researched were not 100% pure all of the time. Some some of their products had additives in them, which I did not want when I was putting that in my body. So that's the reason that I chose Young Living in the first place. But the biggest reason that I stay with them in addition to their great products, is that they're really a great company to work for or work with. I don't know, whatever I do with them. And one of the big reasons, one of the, the things that makes them so great is that they're a really giving company. They give so much back to the communities where they have their farms, which is why I was really interested. That's a weird time. Why I was very much interested in, in staying with Young Living. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you a little bit about eight projects that I'm aware of that Young Living, uh, the Young Living Foundation is doing, eight projects that they're working with. So the, the Young Living, the mission statement of the Young Living Foundation is that it's committed to empowering individuals to achieve their potential and defy limitations by providing wellness and education opportunities to underserved communities. And a lot of the areas where Young Living has their farm are underserved communities. And we're going to find out some of those right now. Pardon me. The first one I want to talk to you about is called Rebuild Nepal. In 2015, there were two major earthquakes in Nepal, and they claimed almost 9,000 lives, and they destroyed over 900,000 homes. So in Yarsi, Y-A-R-S-A, -A, Yarsa, which is a mountain village, it was that was completely destroyed by the earthquakes. The Young Living Foundation is rebuilding 112 homes and two schools. To accomplish this and to supply jobs to unemployed locals, the Young Living Foundation set up a brick making plant in the area and that it's, so that it supplies jobs to the locals who are currently unemployed. And it also hired local construction workers and engineers and it's using local equipment and materials whenever it's possible. Another project is called the Young Living Academy and that's in Ecuador. The Young Living Foundation built a new and advanced school from the ground up in 2009, the Young Living Academy opened the doors to 83 students, and then 100 students, and then 150, and then 200. And now it, it continues to grow every year, and right now it, it has, has expanded and it educates nearly 340 students in grades K through 12. Most of the children in Ecuador, they drop out by eighth grade, but on March 9th of 2016, this past March, the Academy held its first graduation ceremony, and it had a total of 12 students that graduate. The class of 2016 boasted a 100% graduation rate. That's way better than most schools in the United States. Way better. That's phenomenal. Another project that I want to talk about is called the Maestri Orphanage, and that's in Croatia. In Split, if that's how you say it, Croatia, uh, it, this orphanage provides support to more than 125 children and young adults. They've been removed from their families due to neglect or abuse or other reasons. Uh, it's currently the only orphanage in its area of that kind. What it does is it simulates the model of a family setting and they have no more than five children in each apartment with one staff member. So it simulates a family setting and it allows those children to kind of get used to what normal more normal life is about, as opposed to the standard orphanage setting, which has the dorm rooms, which may have 20 to 30 children in each dorm. Another project is called Hope for Justice, and the mission of that particular project is to end human trafficking and slavery in our generation, in this generation right now. 
the the hope for justice, they use a four-tiered strategy that brings freedom to the women and the children that are in this, this trafficking situation. First of all, they train them. They not the not the women and children, but they train the people who are going to be working with them, the frontline professionals. They train them to identify the victims and to work appropriately with them. They also rescue them. The investigators work closely with the local police to remove the women and the children from these trafficking situations. And they also advocate for them. They advocate for access to housing and health care. And also they work with the um, traffickers to uh, cancel the debts that the traffickers have created to keep these women and children imposed in this in this. Um, trafficking situation in, in the slave situation that they're in. And finally, they restore. They work with the victims to overcome the trauma, and they help them to rebuild their lives. Another program is called African Hearts Uganda, and it was established to bring children out of the slums and into transitional homes where they receive food, shelter, and social services, as well as quality education. The Young Living Foundation purchased land and it built African Hearts a new nursery school which um, uh, educates 200 children between the ages of three and five. It also, the Young Living Foundation also doubled the impact of the African Hearts slum program which increases the frequency of meals served to those children, to the starving children in those areas. Another program, and this one is a favorite of a, one of my team members, Stephanie Tyler, I'm putting a plug in for here for you. So feel free to add any information in the comment section to let people know about the party, the, the, the shoe cutting party or whatever you're calling it that you're having on Saturday, December 3rd that I cannot attend because I will be at a TSO concert. But anyway, this, this particular project offers hope for healthier lives and freedom from foot-related diseases through education, jobs, and medical relief. Each week, Soul Hope it helps about 400 people, mainly children, become jigger-free. A jigger is a, like a sand flea, and they're very predominant in the sub-Sahara region of Africa. They, what the Soul Hope does every week is they host two clinics in remote villages and school. And at these clinics, every person that comes in gets their feet washed. The jiggers are removed by a professional and then education is provided to the persons to help them re to prevent reinfestation. Uh, Soul Hope employs local shoemakers and trains them in the innovative techniques to make durable, protective shoes for the community. Each person is provided with a pair of shoes, closed toe shoes, to keep the jiggers from getting back on their feet. After health assessments and recovery, what Soul Hope does is they return individuals to their village. They sanitize the house inside and out to get rid of all of those sand fleas, and they provide the person with a bed, a new bed, so that they're not climbing back in a bed that's infested with these fleas. This process that Soul Hope uses um, allows old materials to be recycled into something useful and it creates jobs. It stimulates the local economy and it provides shoes for children and the people of Uganda who live in these jigger infested areas. The shoes are made, the sole of the shoe is made from um, tires, used tires. And the tops of the shoes are made from denim and uh, milk crates. So it's kind of an interesting looking shoe. And it works, they're pretty sturdy so that the kids don't wear them out before they grow out of them. Another program is called Healing Faith. That's also in Uganda. And that is a program that works with people with areas that have a lot of malaria. In malaria, uh, the majority of deaths that from the people, excuse me, the majority of death in Africa are not from AIDS or HIV related diseases, it's from malaria. More people die from malaria than any other disease in Africa. And most of the people that die are children under the age of five who die from malaria. Since 2011, Healing Faith has been a champion for the fight against malaria in Eastern Uganda and the Young Living Foundation partnered with them in 2015. Um, in, two, in 2015, the Young Living Foundation purchased 4,000 mosquito nets that they gave to Healing Faith and, and they helped 
the Healing Faith Ministry to distribute these nets around the um, the area, eastern Uganda, where they their their main problem is with malaria. And then in 2016, the the found Young Living Foundation helped Healing Faith increase its pat, impact by over a thousand percent. They went from hanging 400 of the nets a month to hanging over 4,000 a month, thanks to generous contribution of Young Living Foundation. The final project I'm going to talk about is Ecuador earthquake relief. As most of you know, in April of this year, 2016, the Ecuador was struck by a very powerful earthquake. And the Young Living Foundation purchased food, water, and supplies and assembled emergency first aid kits, which of course included young living, amazing Young Living products. And then they delivered these to most remote areas that were hit the hardest by the earthquakes. And so that is my Fun Friday Fast Fact about a fabulous Young Living project instead of product. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful Thanksgiving week and that you got to spend some time with your family and friends and you ate a lot of turkey and whatever else you like, and you're having a fabulous Friday. Until next week, bye!